everybody it's Sue from Slow So Sue. How are you? I'm good. Um, I'm back with my June makes. I just did a short little film just um, wearing each of the things that I made to insert here as I talk about them and I was feeling a bit like I was putting off making this video for a few reasons. One time a time factor and the other one because I was a bit disappointed in myself because I thought well I haven't really made much so I don't really have a lot to show but actually I've made quite a bit it's just been the same pattern so um, I shouldn't be so hard on myself really should I so where should I start well let's start with what I'm wearing my nice big boxy granny cardi it's called I'll just Get up and do a quick little twirl for you. Um, you can see it's a bit, it's a bit boxy. Um, I'll, I'm going to insert some footage here of me wearing it, and I still think it needs to be blocked just to put a bit more um, to round out the shape of the neck and just to you know straighten the button placket but otherwise I love it it is such a comfy daggy boxy great cardigan it's not too warm it's really nice with a long sleeve layer underneath and I imagine it will be great um, on the beach and camping and things like that because when it's a bit cooler but you don't but it's not too cool and you just want that extra warm layer that lets in a bit of uh, air this is going to be perfect because of you know all the spaces between the trebles um, but anyway it's lovely it's ma I made it from four ply wool and I will put a link below to where you can get the pattern you can buy it on Ravelry if anybody is interested and if you're more experienced crocheter than I am you might be able to put a little bit more shape into the body but the whole thing is crocheted in one piece and um, pardon me I know this is not sewing related sorry for anybody who's not really interested in this um, but the whole thing is crocheted in one piece. You start at the band and you, um, you crochet a chain. You do your uh, double crochet singularly into each chain until you several rows. You've got a band. And then you do your um, three treble granny stitch, whatever it's called. In rows around and you um, you split off at the armhole and it and the pattern um, creates a set in sleeve and I've never seen I've never had anything like this before so it's been very sort of square whereas this is really rounded and it's like a proper set in sleeve and when you crochet the um, sleeve you crochet in the round so it in the round so it's a tube all the way up and then you decrease on the sides so you you get to a point where you bind off and you decrease up the sides and it fits in beautifully and um, there's a way of determining which color to start your uh, rows with so that when you get to the point where you um, start to decrease for your sleeve it pattern matches which it does all the way across as you can see and it's really cool so definitely worth it I can't remember how much I paid for the pattern maybe I think it might have been seven or eight dollars something like that it wasn't really expensive. It was free in, I think it's called Simply Crochet, but I can't remember. But we don't get that magazine in Australia, or not that I've ever seen. And it was really expensive to like get a subscription or anything like that. So I just bought the pattern. Um, 
and then I use patterns for ply this is the baby wool it's 100% wool so it did cost about I think it was about $80 for the wool Australian dollars so not a cheap cardigan by any stretch of the imagination but I think I will be the only person in my area anyway who's going to have a cardigan just like this. I'm pretty sure it's original. The buttons, um, I'll give you a little close up. The buttons come from, it's just looking at my face, isn't it? I'm going to do that now. <laughs> uh, the buttons come from my daughter in law's mother who um, his family have a sewing shop and um, you know sometimes come across things that they don't need and that they would like to find a home for had this massive big jar of buttons that ended up coming to me which was fabulous and that's where these came from I think they might have been from an estate or something but anyway um, they've been rehomed on my cardigan and yeah I'm really really happy with it I love it underneath I have on the first Paolo Polo Polo I'm going to say Paolo um, by named clothing uh, long sleeve jersey top that I made I did this one by the pattern except for and I'll insert some video in a moment here of me just with this one on. I did it um, exactly the same as a pattern, so if you can see, I hope it focuses in. I'll try to actually get out of the shot. Do it the other way around, maybe, so I can see in the screen. I don't know if you can see there. Um, really sorry if you can't. I'll edit this out if you can't see it. But I twin needled anyway uh, on the sleeve and cuff and the um, bottom. And that was it finished off beautifully, not a problem. The only change I made was I extended the sleeve by two inches and I extended the body by two inches because I'm quite tall and got long arms and so I just did that and it fits perfectly and no issues at all um, and yeah really happy with it the um, so that was the first one that I made then um, I made I'll show you all of the so then I made several more I was like awesome this is great the only change I wanted to make was to add a cuff to the end of the sleeve instead of twin needle because I wanted a little bit extra length so I made how many I made five all together this one I'll insert um, just a picture that I already put on Instagram with this one underneath uh, one of the Astorias which I will which you can see so this is a, just um, that stripy sort of see-through type fabric it's actually really warm I really like it um, but you do need to wear sort of you know either a singlet vest in the UK or uh, flesh coloured brows underneath but otherwise it's really nice. Uh, I made another black one with a slightly smaller I didn't model this one slightly smaller car, uh, collar on it just purely because that's what I had in mean, fabric wise I just went with it you can see that it's a bit shorter can you see that and 
actually as I was cutting it out what I'm hoping is that you can't see it at all but there's actually a flaw in the fabric so I'm going to bring it up so you can it's really close and someone tells you then see you can see it there it's just here just there it's I don't know what that is but that's a flaw in the fabric and if you look really closely you can see it but nobody else can so that's great and if it was ready to wear you probably still have that flaw and they'd probably still sell it and no one would notice so then I did this pale blue one and I actually had the idea of this one going underneath this cardi that I made and it does look nice as well this is really super soft and drapey and luscious and I will insert some footage of me wearing this one here really nice cozy and warm and just soft and silky and beautiful and then from that that knit fabric I mean they're all knit fabric but this is sort of looks like it's been hand knitted type fabric I made another one and it's got a bit of um, Stellina through it which makes it sparkly and it is beautiful like a well it's not beautiful but I love it I I'll put some video of me here wearing it I um, didn't twin needle the the hems on any of these I overlocked them and I just sort of li I liked the the lettuce leaf edge that happened all by itself from my not so great tension I guess on my overlocker still trying to talk Wayne into uh, buy me a baby lock but um, evolution so a cover stitch and overlocking but you know I keep doing things like going away on holiday and doing courses over east that cost money so one day anyway so you can see this sort of lettuce leaf edge on the bottom of that and you can see it better in the video footage so that was that so I made five polos all together which I'm pretty happy with then I made two Agnes's with the puffy sleeve so I made this one which is the red polka dot one the one where I was saying this was really expensive fabric but I can see why because it's beautiful really nice the stretch and recovery is really good when you stretch even though it's printed when you stretch it the um, let me do it when you stretch it the color doesn't change a whole lot it still looks really nice um, I twin needled actually I made a couple of mistakes with the neckline and so on this one the the neck was just a little bit short I thought the neck band but I twin needled it down and it then it just you can see the stitching and once I did that it just sat beautifully no problems at all so I'm really happy with the way it sits on my neck I did alter the Agnes pattern the same as I did the um, A-line dress by the Avid Seamstress so I um, did a forward shoulder adjustment and uh, I didn't do a sway back adjustment so I did forward shoulder and I took a piece, a dart, like a triangle out of the neck so slid across to the arm side and took a small piece out of the neck line but left the arm side the same width and the, there's no gaping 
at all now where there was gaping on the first two Agnes's I made. There's no gaping at all. It sits on my shoulder seam where it should sit. The sleeves still fit beautifully. It's not a problem. As you can see from me wearing, the, um, wearing them in the footage here. But yeah, really, once I did that, it fits just beautifully, which is interesting because I've always had this opinion that, you know, stretch jersey, sort of, you know, pull it, twist it, stretch it, and it all sort of fits into place, and that's fine. But making those pattern adjustments has made it fit just beautifully. I'm really, really happy with how they fit. So anyway, I remember talking, or I don't know if you remember, and I'm really sorry, this is grubby, and I can tell you the story why, but anyway. The flower pot fabric. So this one, i put the footage here. This is me wearing it, and it needs to go in the wash. And it is going in the wash. Um, so the flower pot fabric. So this is the fabric I bought to make a running top and decided I just love fabric so much. Why would I do that? Nobody sees me running. I run at five o'clock in the morning or earlier and it's dark and no one sees me. So <clears throat> I decided to make an Agnes out of it. And what I found was as I was cutting it out, I didn't have enough fabric to... to cut the, all the pieces out and so I put some footage here of me wearing it and I do a little twirl and I point to the back where I actually seam to the back in two pieces so I cut the top half of the back and then the bottom half of the back sorry if you see any grubby bits this really needs to go and wash you can see there where the seam is but because the pattern's so busy and it's at horizontal lines on the pattern anyway, I don't think you can notice it. Wayne said he, don't, he didn't notice it, that it looked fine. So, um, yeah, I did that and it worked out fine. I think it's, it's great. I really like it. So two Agnes's, five polos and, well, five five Astorias, seam work Astorias. So, um, where do I start? Let me start with my least favourite. I thought it would be my favourite. Okay, so I'll put in some footage of it. Here it is here. I'll put some footage in here. This is the um, shimmery, silvery, uh, striped stretch jersey that I bought from the Remnant Warehouse in Sydney. Um, and I thought it would make a really nice evening type Astoria. It's okay. And it might look really nice with, um, I don't know, the right pair of pants or skirt or something but the neck as this the story I've seen other people um, I know Sean I think from Kittenish Behaviour and uh, Jess from Little Miss Lorraine somebody else it might have been Amanda from I Sew A Lot somebody else or someone else who also has made this story from different types of fabric, made the exact same size and thought the fabric had similar stretch and recovery etc and ended up with different top each time and I've had the same experience so with that silvery one the neckline seems really high it's cut exactly the same as all the other ones but it's just something about it doesn't quite look or sit as nice as I would like it I'm not going to unpick it, because I'm not. I'm <laughs> just going to go with it. Um, but I'll wear it. It's okay. But, yeah, it was interesting. So th I did that one. Then I did, again, exactly the same size, this knit fabric. So this is a little bit like a Breton, Breton style uh, with the um, stripes. And it's, I'll put 
footage of me wearing it here. Um, it's quite a relaxed fit, nice long sleeves again. All of them have long sleeves which I love because my hands are freezing cold now that it's winter. Um, I love this. It's a, it needs uh, a singlet or a vest or even a long sleeve t-shirt underneath because it's quite thin but again it will be beautiful um, spring top over you know a summery dress at the beach or camping or whatever but yeah I really love it but it's quite a relaxed fit and it's the neck seems wider yet it's exactly the same um, pattern size everything as the white one then I made two um, more from this spotted fabric which is sort of um, it's an interlock jersey I don't remember what it's called I'm going to be honest with you it might be some kind of a ponty I don't really know it's nice it's got a lot of stretch but again it fits slightly different it's tighter than the other two um, I did make a mistake with this which only one friend who sews picked it up so I'll show you I'm not going to change it because again I don't really care but see here in the front it wasn't until I put it on I realized that I put the neckband on the wrong way and when I was putting it on I was thinking because there's another one I'll show you where I put the seam I matched the seam up to the side and I tried that because I saw, I think it was Amanda from I Sew A Lot did it, and she said she really liked it like that. And I thought, oh, I'll try that. And I did it, and I didn't really like it. It sort of, it sat up a little bit, and it wasn't, just didn't. I prefer it in the middle at the back, just, that's me, that's what I like. And if it sits up a little bit at the back, it, uh, I guess I don't see it, and it doesn't matter. And I was thinking, well, I won't put this one on the side, I'll put it in the centre at the front, stupid. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Nobody but me and maybe somebody who sews and is really picky about their clothing would notice it. But yeah, I love the colour. I'm just going to insert a picture. I put this on Instagram with the um, cream striped polo underneath. So I'm just going to put a picture or that same picture here again so you can see it. So that's that one. And then I made one in navy blue. Dots, exactly the same. This time the um, seam on the neckband is in the right place. It's at the back. I love these dots. I just, I love them. I didn't, I did see the mustard one that Jess has, but I don't think that mustard is really my colour. I'm a bit pale for that. I think you need to have dark hair. Looks nicer. Um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. But anyway, that was that. And then my last and my most favourite Astoria is this one. I'll put in, I'll insert some picture of me wearing it here. I made this one and I wore it to work with my black um, Collotts Buttrick B whatever I'll put the pattern down, number down the bottom and a pair of um, over, knee, over the knee high heel boots underneath, very 70s and got so many comments about the top it, like everyone loved, everyone's seen the clots a hundred times but they just love the top um, it's got little foxes on it let me show you the foxes see and that's where the seam is on the side for that one just there the only thing again there's always something isn't there I don't know why we have to pick to pieces our things that we make but anyway let's do it let's just go there shall we 
I put one of the cuffs on upside down and I went, you know what? I don't care. I'm loving this whole I don't care thing. I do actually care a little bit. I did say to myself, I'm not going to fix these things. All of the thi all of these little uh, little hiccups, glitches, differences in the norm is what we're going to call them because it's not really mistakes. Like then it hasn't rendered any of these items of clothing not functional. They're all still functional. They're all still great and I love them all but they're glitches, they're slight difference to how I would have normally done them and I decided purposely not to change them because they're all a reminder to me. The reason that I that I had all those little hiccups in making the tops that I made was the attitude that I had to making them and that was was me trying to rush through and make lots of things quickly and I thought what are you doing when I got to the end and I had all these little hiccups I was like what what are you doing okay so um, in our community of sewers there are lots of different ways of doing things and there are some people who want to challenge themselves to be really fast at sewing and I'm not one of those people and I tried to do that and it was like I kind of jumped onto a bandwagon that I never wanted to be on and I did it without thinking and this is me not anyone else I understand people do and they love that sort of challenge but I'm not that sort of competitive person I never really have been and um, it's like even with my running and personal running I don't really uh, I don't enter into you know competitions races I don't go running with friends I don't do any of that sort of challenging stuff I um, you know barely keep track of runs I use map my run to just keep track of how many runs I'm doing in a week and that's it really um, I not I'm just not competitive like that and I suddenly did this zipping through sewing things and and made some mistakes and so I had to really like sit sit myself back and go what are you doing that you you don't that's not you you're allowed to be your own individual self and you don't need to jump onto anybody else's um I don't know, bandwagon I guess. I don't mean that in a negative way, so please don't take it that way. I mean, I just need to make sure that I be true to myself and that's why I'm not changing any of the little hiccups in my tops because they remind me that I need to, to be me when, I'm, when I make my clothes. I do it because I love sewing and I need to slow down and not try to do so much. I've been doing too much. And I look in my wardrobe, I don't need any new clothes. I didn't, like I literally could never make any more clothes for myself ever except for maybe some underwear. And um, I would be fine until I die. All right, so one last thing that I've made that I'm gonna insert here that I absolutely love and have had lots of compliments on is my velvet a-line dress that you all know that I have raved and raved and raved about this um, dress pattern I love it so I'll just insert the pictures and I'll talk to you about so Working with stretch velvet, beautiful, overlocker doesn't like it, fine, doesn't matter because you know what, it doesn't fray, it's just, it's a stretch knit fabric, so you don't need to finish the edges, it's a little bit like scuba or ponte or whatever, you just don't need to finish the edges, so fantastic, didn't have to do that, I just made it up and that was it, it came together really quickly, the only thing you have to worry about is that you cut your 
pieces all in with the nap in the same direction and that's it it was really easy to make I haven't made the navy blue Agnes yet uh, dress which I was going to do because I just haven't had time but yeah put picture or some footage of me in the A-line um, maroon velvet dress here um, but yeah I just I love it really love it the pockets make it a it doesn't really flow as nicely as it could because of the pockets they're a bit thick you know in that A-line seam and then that doesn't um, it doesn't sort of float as nicely as it could but I think I'm the only person who notices that and the flip side to that is that when you've got this dress on and you put your hands in your pockets it's like putting your hands in the pockets of your dressing gown it's divine snugly and warm and so it, you know it's that's a winner for me I don't care if it doesn't flow quite as nicely down the side seams and I have to admit that one of the girls at work is coming up and putting a hand in my pocket quite a bit when I wore the dress once she knew what it was like which was really kind of funny um, but we have a bit of a thing where if someone looks snugly the other one goes and snuggles up to them so it's all good with you know sticking hands in pockets thing um, but yeah so anyway the dress is really nice really comfortable I took the front and back centre seam out of the top and the skirt because you just didn't need them I um, reduced the, the side seams by about an inch I took it in on the sides by about an inch because of the because you need some negative ease because of the stretch in the velvet uh, <clears throat> excuse me and otherwise yeah it was just came together really quickly really nicely um, I love it one last little thing that I have to show you that I made was a little project bag. Got little owls on it. And it is fully lined. And inside is my work in progress which I'm hoping that my new 80 centimeter circular needle comes today because um, not tomorrow the next day I'm going to Sydney for a week to do a writing course and see my son and probably do a little bit of fabric slash yarn shopping so I am in the middle of this um, what's it called? It's called the Fuss Free Festival Shawl, I'm pretty sure. And basically, it's. I can't remember if it's a free pattern or not. But anyway, what happens is. I don't think it is actually, I think it's a paid for pattern is you just you, you start down the bottom and there's a way where you increase and as you increase you end up with this sort of uh, curve uh, and um, once you have knitted up your whole yarn, ball of yarn cake of yarn whatever you want to call it um, you get right to the very end and then you knit this little fancy edge called a pico bind off um, which gives you a bit of a little frill and it's essentially going to be a scarf well they call it a shawl but I would call it a scarf and I am loving these colors well um, that's all of my June makes I don't think I'm really going to have any July makes because I still have things to finish which is dressing gown for my daughter, the Agnes blue velvet dress um, 
and running leggings slash pants with a pocket and a zip for myself and for my beautiful daughter-in-law whom I will be seeing this week. It's very exciting. Flying to Sydney in two days. So um, I probably won't do a July makes but I might or well, I'm hoping that while I'm in Sydney to visit um, a couple of lovely yarn stores and to go to some fabric stores and definitely going to go to Tasudi in Surrey Hill because I love Tasudi and the Remnant Warehouse and um, I'm going to see if I can find the Marrickville Road fabric stores which I've never been to so I'm going to have a bit of a fabric day and I'm going to hopefully do some vlogging whilst I do that. You probably won't be too interested in the writing course that I'm going to be doing or anything work related. Um, but that's okay. I'll be in Sydney for a week so I'll do a little yarn shopping, a little fabric shopping and I'll take you along for the ride. So I'll do that instead of a July makes video because July is just a continuation of June for me. So thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe or the like button. Um, I'll put links down below to the patterns I use, to the uh, knitting and crochet patterns that I mentioned, to the yarns that I mentioned, which was Peyton's yarn for this jumper and nomadic yarns for that beautiful um, fuss free festival shawl that I'm knitting and I will talk to you all soon thanks for watching bye